the certificates like bio in German or um, vegan or fair trade. This data can be contributed preferably actually by the producers, but uh, maybe everybody else can contribute in a, e.g. in a wiki way. Um, we use um, semantic web technologies to store this data and to share this data, and we want to use the Creative Commons license, the attribution license, to make also the uh, to give the legal foundation to share all this. And later on, if this data is available, basically everybody, we or you, whoever, can build kind of search um, engines or whatever, play around with this kind of data. The current status, we're playing around to, uh, with, with uh, Freebase, and if you know Freebase is a um, web platform to, to build ontologies and, and save data or store data there, and we are developing the ontologies there and um, trying to, if we can, yeah, if we can model the, the reality so that it's, that it's usable in a way. So currently we're in, in limited to the ingredients and producers and certificates playing around with this stuff. Also there are legal issues to solve which is not clear so far. Do we have to ask the, everybody for, uh, for permission or can everybody enter um, basically the data when you take a, um, a Mars bar and write uh, the ingredients into, into example Freebase which is just a uh, current platform, by the way. And there's a lot of to, lots of stuff to do. We have to finish and test these ontologies, run case studies, activate community, which I hope to do right now, and we have to find producers who have nothing to hide, and it's also in their interest, because um, if, if people have nothing to hide, then they um, get more customers who are really, uh, yeah, who trust them and buy their products. That's it already. I want to thank some people, Melly, Tim, Jens, and you for being here. If you want to have more information, uh, you can find this on the website. It's uh, still growing, and um, I'm happy to get any feedback from you. I'm downstairs in the OpenBSD booth, and otherwise just send me a mail that, that you can find the address can you find on the uh, website. Thanks a lot. Okay, Konrad, thank you. And again, thanks for sharing the machine to Aaron and Tobias. So, if Steve with hackerspace.lu doesn't show up, we are finished before time. Thanks to four speakers who are not using all the four minutes. So that's the first in our lightning talk history. Um, Albert, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, we I still have to time to kill, so if you have something to say, come, please come off the stage and please point what? out your project. So, yeah. how about you? Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, we have more people. So, while you prepare your machine, you could just uh, tell us what you're talking about or suspense factor. So it's like 10 more minutes, so could be two, could be three talks. Think about it. Let us know. Get ready. Get your slides out, you know. And basically it's all fine without slides. So if you just come up on stage, present your name, tell us about your project and where to find you, how to get in contact, that's all good. Okay? So, and if you're a speaker, please add all the information into the wiki page about Lightning Talks if you still haven't done this, so people can call you on the DECT system here at the Congress or get in contact after the Congress, and that includes you, so please include your information after your talk. Go ahead. Yes. So, um, maybe I talk about this. Uh, this was a Lightning Talk I hold in Vienna. Uh, I've been there at, uh, in November, and... Uh, I have talked several times about the Neo layout, so um, check it out in the videos from last year or anywhere. And maybe today I talk about a little other thing. So I thought about, um, hey, you have to type every time in. Um, you type a GPG receive key, and then you have to put the, uh, the ID, or you make search key or anything. Uh, wouldn't it be cool if we had a, a machine readable um, visiting card? What's a business card? So. Um, yes, so um, the normal visit card is, uh, uh, business card is not cool enough and 
if you compare fingerprints, um, it's not not good. So um, we have a solution a little bit like our um, our ID card. Um, and there are some standards. Uh, for example, the standard ISO 7810, um, which which is used for these small credit cards. And maybe one f can find some other standards. So, for example, the code 128. And yes, wouldn't it be cool? We have such things on our business card, um, which is mainly the fingerprint. And you can go to your computer, and maybe you have a, a scanner, and you make beep, and you have the fingerprint inside. You don't have to compare it and to type it in yourself. Yes, then we have the data matrix code, which is standardized anywhere. Maybe some hacker has a 2D barcode reader and. He has it on the computer mix. Uh, he has a webcam and he holds it before the webcam and then has a cool program to decode. Yes, then we have this machine readable zone. I have seen the keyboards where you can make so and then you have this inside. So there's a standard of it. Um, where's my key here? So this is um, the f for the identification. This is Germany. This is the ID. So then the name and down there is the fingerprint and here is the checksum, so everything is standardized, very great. So, and um, that's it. Hey. So, I have some printed out. Um, everybody who will sign my key, I give one. <laughs> and yes, um, if, because we have something on the back, uh, the back side and it's free, so what can we do? Yes, we put the whole key on it in an OCR font. So machine readable until the end. You can put it on your scanner and, and read it with OCR if you are anywhere where you have your, no internet. OK, that's it. OK, thanks, Benjamin. Thank you very um, much. Yes, and please, if there's anyone else, step on the stage right now. Do we have yes, the adapter? Yes. I think we do somewhere. Yes, please come on stage. And uh, is, is the box of uh, pennies still here? Yes. So I hope uh, you understood it's just opt-in, not opt-out. <laughs> Which one is it? Is anyway, it, so is we, it we are donating for the AK4 art for the uh, anonymous SIM card project. And uh, let's see. They probably hate us for, p for counting the pennies then. <laughs> Right. Uh, how's does, the time? Uh, does, like five minutes left. Does anybody has uh, DVI on VGA? Oh, here comes the adapter. Yes. Cool. Okay. No, That's the small ones too. I like mine. Okay. DVA to VGA. Anybody? Okay. Yeah. Always keep the adapter with you. So that was the okay. second. Hey, we got one more. Oh, okay. One more try there for, for this on. guy. So uh, you go on the stage, prepare, and hurry a little bit because now we are running out of time. And I remind the rest of the audience that we have tonight uh, the third session. So half past eight at the room three, Saal drei, just this level, just the room over there. And tomorrow we meet again at in the morning, 11.30 in this room. So tonight at that room and tomorrow on, on this room. And now we have our last lightning talk. And like and pray. Okay, time is I running. I think we have a slide. Great. Um, okay, I wanted to, uh, to tell you a little bit about cryptology. Sorry about that. <laughs> I come from cryptographic community and I do research in cryptography. Um, so there, there's already a talk in this conference about Keylock. Um, uh, so the funny thing is that, you know, you have open source cryptography, such as AES or triple DS. Keylock was sold for $10 million. I don't know if you have realized that. <laughs> Proprietary cipher, a very, very weak. Um, should have a security level comparable to DES. Well, it, it doesn't have. Um, the funny thing is also that um, there are challenges for cryptographic algorithms. For example, $70,000 for RC5, okay? Um, but $10 million is really a lot. Um, I, I don't want to describe the cipher for you. It's very simple block cipher. 
with uh, basically one Boolean function that updates one bit at a time. But there's a lot, lots of rounds. There are five, more than 500 rounds in this cipher. So it's a uh, repeating many, many times the same very simple uh, operation in which uh, one new bit is created. Um, just overview of, of attacks. Um, there are kind of three categories of attacks. Um, attacks in which you have like one or two known plain texts. Actually, it cannot be one because uh, the key size is twice bigger than the block size. And basically, with one known plain text, you don't have enough information to even characterize the key. So it can be a, 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 at least two. Category two is two to the power of 16 known plain text, and category three is two to the power of 32 known plain text. So this is actually, um, given the block size is 32 bits, this is actually like the whole dictionary of the um, keylog cipher. So there are these three categories. And um, um, I just wanted to stress the fact that there is a lot of different attacks on keylog now. And you know, from the hacker's perspective, the one attack will work is the brute force and the improvements of the earth. But from the cryptographic point of view, there are many, many different attacks and many different attacks, uh, attack scenarios that are very interesting. And um, I think I have now like 12 different attacks on keylog. And they are all very, 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 very different, and we are studying these. Um, I'm at UCL, maybe you have noticed, it's uh, University College London, and we have an MSc in Information Security. And we also have a new MSc that is starting next year, which is uh, Information Security Management. So um, if you want to come to study in the UK, uh, why not? Study with me. Um, I will really skip the attacks. There are attacks with um, governor bases and Minisat. Terrible, terribly smart beasts, these uh, automated systems that uh, break ciphers. Basically, almost any cipher that's simple enough is just broken by this, uh, these things. Um, actually, up to 160 rounds of kilo can be broken directly just by running the software. And it's an open source software. Um, brute force, according to uh, undisclosed, undisclosed source sources like Russian Mafia, uh, it can be done with, uh, in days with FPGAs. Uh, Self-similarity attack presented at SCAL conference in Hamburg uh, very recently. It speeds up a little bit, the uh, brute force. Um, there is uh, several versions. Here is a summary. I, I will skip the summary, but there are different versions of this attack. So this is like saving the carbon footprint of uh, the spooks or of the criminal organizations, just doing brute force with less power, less uh, uh, just going slightly a little bit down. That's a very interesting topic. Uh, second category, two, 2 to the power of 16 non plain text. Well, um, we are the first actually to find a very interesting attack of this kind, but later, uh, Biham Dunkelman and Pranel, they found a really, really nice attack published in Europe 2008, which is better, faster, but the same category. And finally, the best category is 2 to the power of 32 non plain text. It's a bit a lot, okay? You cannot really expect a smart card to give you this many plain text. But then the attacks get really, really fast. So I will skip. We have several attacks published and several still not published. Uh, the fastest is to the power 23 no, um, uh, in computation. So the attack is really, really much faster uh, than actually, it's, it's faster than getting the data that you need for, to do the attack. And also, um, um, I broke another automobile cipher, which is HITAC2. This is not yet published. The paper is here. It's being circulated to some people. Um, but I didn't do any experimentation on HITAC2. So if, 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 if uh, somebody wants to experiment with the attack, please contact me. Um, I can help. Uh, basically, I can, I can just break it faster than exhaustive search. So it's faster than brute force. The HITAC2, very popular automobile and building um, cipher. Thank you very much. So, what was your name again? So, my name? Yeah. Yes, Nicolas Kurtz.